I think I'm right in saying that my love affair with African history really began when I was a boy, when I got my hands on the book Chuck of the Bushveld, written by Sir Percy Fitzpatrick. And I devoured that book, fell in love with Jock the dog and the story, the characters, the lives that they, that they lived. And I wanted to know more about what had been going on in those days in that part of the world close to where I was growing up. And it wasn't actually long after that that I had the really good fortune to meet the American author, Robert Ruach, who happened to be on a hunting safari in Mozambique with a close family friend by the name of Wally Johnson, who uh, also went on to become a bit of an African legend as one of the last of the old school white hunters. But I had uh, the opportunity to spend a little time with Mr. Rock. And although I was young, he captivated me and um, very kindly took a little bit of in, an interest in me. Um, and subsequently, I read virtually everything he wrote and particularly enjoyed his books on, on Kenya, um, Something of Value and Uhuru, which are, I think are two of the best books ever written about Africa. And that just made me hungry for more. Um, I've been trying for the rest of my life, uh, for most of my life, as it were, to write like uh, Robert Duroc, sadly with very limited success, but he certainly inspired me in, in many, many ways. And, and almost in, when I look back on it, he, he shaped my life. On a less happy note, one of the reasons why I am keen to do a series like this and uh, try and get out the truth about what happened in Africa is because I'm incensed by a lot of what is being written and particularly a lot of what is being taught about Africa in schools and universities around the world. And it all seems to follow a now familiar narrative, which is to vilify the early white arrivals in Africa from the explorers to the missionaries and then to the colonial settlers. There is uh, virtually nothing positive said about the European contribution to Africa. And I think that this is untrue. And I'd like to set out to, to try and set the record straight on this issue. I, I feel particularly sorry actually for the younger generations going to school and, and later some to university and having to be subjected to this, what I think is nothing less than propaganda. And it all seems induced, um, all seems aimed at inducing a sense of guilt in the younger generations. And I actually think this is a form of mental cruelty. These uh, children are being saddled with a guilt burden that they absolutely don't deserve. Whatever did or did not happen is not their doing and why they should have to hang their heads in shame for the alleged sins of their ancestors is to my mind nonsensical and I hold the peddlers of this rubbish that is being tossed out in institutions all around the world in complete and utter contempt. And if I can do a little bit to set the record straight and maybe bring a little bit of relief to the minds of some people who've been subjected to this false narrative, then I feel 
I might have achieved something. And uh, I'm certainly going to give it a shot.